Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to 2024. This is Conversational Pace, and we have a shoe for you today. Of course, it's a trail shoe. One would even say it's a mountain shoe because we have the Topo Mountain Racer 3. This is the second Topo that we've reviewed. We previously did the Topo Pursuit. So we'll have a couple comparisons to that. Um, before we get going, just want to let everyone know that these shoes were provided to us by Topo and Running Warehouse, but we're under no financial obligation to say whether we like the product or not because we want to keep these reviews authentic and beneficial for you. So no one will get to preview or watch this footage before it gets published to YouTube. I think that might be a personal best for the fastest. I've said the disclaimer. We're getting pretty good. We're getting up to like jackass standards. You like, could hire one of those, like, or one of those tools that like zips through it, like in the old TV commercials. Oh yeah, like for all the like medical symptoms for why you should <laughs> should or should not buy like Cialis or something. <laughs> <laughs> Do not send us your videos. We will not open or view them. <laughs> Some quick stats about the shoe: one hundred fifty dollars for the Topo Mountain Racer Three. My pair is a U.S. size ten. It came in at ten and a half ounces, two hundred ninety nine grams, and that's a a weight with a little bit of dirt so like out of the box it might be a little bit lighter but nobody cares about that stack height we're looking 28 millimeters in the forefoot 33 millimeters in the heel for a five millimeter drop that is three millimeters more foam than the topo mountain racer 2 the materials this upper is a one piece engineered mesh upper it is a pretty tight like tight weave uh engineered mesh very robust toe cap that actually does protect the foot a little bit we've got kind of a ghillie style lacing system also has topo's gator ring going into their little loops in the back of the heel for their kind of like topo brand proprietary gator moderately padded tongue it is gusseted into the midfoot for some kind of added stability and keeping that tongue in place the heel cup is very rigid very padded very protective, definitely keeps the foot centered over the shoe. What else about this upper? Am I missing anything? It's pretty simple. Got I think our... they call it the lace stay system, which is interesting. You kind of talked about the laces, but the, the two loops at the base of the gusseted tongue, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, instead of just doing like your classic slit in the tongue, they've got two little ropes that, yeah. the, that the laces come through. It worked. I don't know. I have no problems with it. Um, but yeah, over, other than that, like pretty simple. Upper. And then we got your classic uh, squared off topo shaped toe box the midsole is their newer eva blend it's called zip foam uh zip foam is gosh it's used in almost all of their shoes shy of a few road shoes now it's a little bit lighter weight a little bit bouncier i don't know why they'd ever say anything like worse about it like of course all their new foams always get better lighter weight apparently more durable more protective more bounce it's just one big slab of zip foam uh no plates in this shoe the outsole is kind of the tried and true classic topo outsole design i mean they've been using this for gosh at least a half a dozen years now across most of their shoes even going back to like the original terra venture yep. it's a vibram mega grip on the light base it's it's one piece but there is some exposed midsole foam we'll dive into that a little bit but uh you know that's it for the materials finn what kind of mileage did you get in this one just over 100 miles, 100.3 miles in this shoe. Whew. Some miles in the Salt Lake City area, but most of the time while testing the shoe, I was over in my home state of Maine and then also in London, England, in Dublin, Ireland. So did a bit of uh, city running in London and a little bit of trail running in Ireland. So uh, multi-environment for this one, which was cool. Nice. Another, another international shoe. You actually have a trend of taking your topos internationally because you took the pursuit overseas as well right took the pursuit to chamonix in the summer of 2022 so yeah there's something about topo and uh heading over to the homeland interesting you see you see much other topos over there in europe have they broken into the euro no, market and, and maybe we get into this more but i feel like topo is one of those brands where a lot of the shoe reviewers have deep admiration for it and they feel like zip foam is underrated and it's one of the you know better outsold shoes on the market but it hasn't quite hit with like the general running population at least not to the extent that would be like commensurate with their level of excitement and so yeah no i didn't it's it's one of those weird brands for me it's kind of a mystery well it's definitely not a euro fit 
That's for sure. So perhaps the European right. market hasn't adopted the uh, wider toe box and like <laughs> space. I don't know. Um, I got in 115 miles in the mountain racer three. I, I took it across a lot of different terrains. So I got in some running down in the Bay Area uh, where I got in you just some road miles as well as some hard packed dirt road. Some I did a couple speedier trail workouts. Uh, some longer, flatter trail runs. And then in Ashland, I got in some of our more verdy, hard pack single track. But I also, it also did rain and snow a little bit. So I got to take it in some mud, some sloppy terrain, a little bit of snow. So I got to really put the shoe through the whole gamut of, uh, of terrains and really test out the outsole. What did you think about the fit and uh, I guess kind of the overall upper impressions of the shoe? Yeah. Uh, in terms of the fit, I mean, going back to that lacing system, the, I, I liked the lacing system in the sense that it didn't cause any moving of the, the tongue, like during running, like I'll, on a lot of different shoes, you will see movement to like one side or the other, or it'll, it'll bunch up and just cause irritation on sort of the top of the foot. Uh, I didn't feel like there were any issues there. Um, one thing that I expected some of the material on the upper, I, I felt early on, it was, it was firmer than I would have expected. And I thought it was going to relax over time, especially as you hit like 100 miles. It never quite relaxed for me. So that, that was interesting. The colorway we got, the black on yellow, you know, mixed with just the type of material. I don't think it's great for breathability. Um, the one thing I think that's good about it, it, just a wider natural toe box. You were talking about that earlier. I think it would, you know, it's good in the sense that it'll accommodate, you know, more types of feet. Um, and then it's good for longer runs too. Like I did do a long run in this shoe. Uh, you know, sometimes swelling is an issue. Splay is important. So, uh, wider platform there is good, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, more like soft negatives than like soft positives or overwhelming <laughs> positives. To me, the most interesting thing was the lacing system, which like I've dealt with on a lot of other shoes, the movement and that, that was cool. Yeah. I thought the lacing system was great. I, I was able to, uh, get a very precise lockdown in the shoe and it I never once had to like stop on a run and retie it. Um it was very much a set it and forget it type lacing system. And I think that kind of goes back to what you said about the upper not having much stretch or movement. Like the material's kind of flexible, but like over 115 miles, this upper has stretched nothing. Which yeah. is uh, perhaps good or bad for some people. You know, Depends on if the you runner. if yeah. you get this shoe and it's kind of tight to start it's probably going to stay that way, you know, unless you just really compress the midsole foam and create space that way. But yeah, kind of what you get is what you get, you know, um, right. which, which was great for me because I definitely didn't need any more room in the shoe. I mean, that's kind of one of the qualms I have with Topo in that for me, having a slightly narrower with forefoot, they're a little bit too wide for me up front. Um, you know, the heel and the midfoot is very much regular width. you know, it's your kind of classic D width. So it's not a wide equivalent um, in the back half of the shoe, but in the forefoot, it's very wide. And when I was running down steeper terrain, the lockdown was great. When you added turning, that was where I ran into some issues because I just simply have space on either side of my forefoot. So at all day paces, no problem. Picking it up a little bit and running on single track, my foot is just sliding. So, um, you know, definitely an, an, some negatives for the faster side of things for like easy, just conversational pace running. It wasn't really <laughs> ever an issue. Um, we are on that channel. That's exactly what, what I meant. <laughs> Did you have heel lockdown issues at all? No. Um, I guess, well, I, as with, I think I do with most topos, I, I skip the second to last eyelet and just lay straight to the back one. Um, Interesting. And then that way I don't have, sometimes, I, I oftentimes skip the second to last eyelet and then use the last one instead of using both. And the reason for that is, one, oftentimes I run out of lace. Two, I don't like having a second crossover right at the very top. I just want one crossover, but it just be a little higher up. So that's what I did in this topo. And like, I had zero heel slip issues. Did you, did you? Yeah, I did, but I didn't use, I, I, I threaded through the second to last one and didn't do the one closer to the ankle bone. So I think that, that jury's still up for me in that case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In terms of the length, 
you know, I got a size 10 and it fits very true to size in terms of length. So that part was good. Yeah, the toe bumper up top is just nice to have uh, for that little extra security because I wouldn't put this in the maximal cushion category. I'd put this kind of right in that medium. So like you're not getting that full bucket seat, you know, foam protection right. around your foot. Moving to kind of the underfoot feel, I wrote down a lot of notes because one, and, and I, I cannot find my notes for the Topo Pursuit. So I'm kind of curious if like, if they changed the the like formula of this version of zip foam versus the pursuit a little bit, or like my preferences for a shoe have just changed over the course of the last year, year and a bit. But I was surprised at how much more flexible and soft the foam got for me underfoot over the course of mm. 115 miles. Like when I pulled it out of the box, I thought it was somewhat firmer, but in a good way, like firmer, responsive, had some stiffness to it. I was like, okay, this shoe's got a little bit of pop. It makes sense. It's called the mountain racer. Over yep. the course of the running, it slowly got more flexible. It softened up. And for some, that's going to be great because you get, I got, you know, you get more ground feel. The shoe moves with the ground. I've then felt like for me, my foot was starting to have to work a little bit more than I wanted it to, especially for a, yeah. a mountain racing shoe. So I started to feel more rocks. Um, it was very flat. Like it's, it's, it's flexible in the forefoot now, like it, a surprising amount, like almost to the point where I considered the feel in the forefoot, like somewhat mushy, which sometimes was nice. But then I started to feel a few more rock hits, uh, you know, from like miles, like 80 to 115. And there's even, I even have a puncture in the foam as well. Like it didn't go all the way through, but there is a spot where I like broke the surface of the foam. So I'm curious what the mm. shoe would have been like if there, if there was maybe like a thin rock plate or something there. So that's one thing that yeah. um, is going to be a pro or a con for some people was how much more flexible the shoe got. And I, I wish that it retained some of that stiffness. So this is maybe a similar category complaint. Like, yes, this is not a max cushion shoe, but there is higher stack. There is more foam added to this version of the shoe. And it just based on that, it makes me question whether you want this shoe in a mountain setting purely because in most mountain settings, you're dealing with more technical terrain. And I think if you, especially if you're someone with narrower feet, and you're looking for more security on technical trails, I can see this shoe becoming very problematic in those uh, environments. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm not going to take this shoe on something super technical. If my foot filled out the forefoot better, it would be nice, you know, in the same way that like the normal Chirac was nice on technical terrain because the shoe was flexible and like moved with the ground. Um, and I think that that can still be achieved with this stack height of foam but the one thing that just has had me a little bit worried was like bombing rockier descents because i was worried that rocks were just gonna come up and like punch my foot a little bit too hard and then and then i'm just running a little bit timid do you, so like i feel like when they were building this shoe with the extra foam that was intended to replace the need for like a carbon plate for stability or a rock plate for protection do you feel like the extra foam wasn't enough for what the shoe was intended to be built for. So, so the foam in the Topo Mountain Racer Two was not their zip foam, and it had three millimeters less. But that foam was quite a bit firmer, and to some people, like more dead feeling. But it protected the foot a lot more. So even though they add three millimeters more stack to the Topo Mountain Racer Three, the foam got softer. And definitely works in quite a bit more than their old foam did. So I would argue that even though they added three more millimeters with this new foam, it's actually not as protective as the previous right. mountain racer. And of course, for some, for some people, like this is going to be plenty of protection, especially if you're coming from like a lower stack shoe, like their Terra Venture or the like MT5, even, you know, even, I mean, we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but like comparing this to the Lone Peak, this yeah. has, I think, three more millimeters of stack in the forefoot than the Lone Peak um, by Ultra and quite a bit more in the heel. How do you, how do you feel about zip foam compared? Cause like we've reviewed, you know, um, Zumex foam quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure how many times if we've done pro fly foam, but like, how does it, how does zip foam compare in your opinion? 
So, you know, zip foam at the end of the day is still just a pretty typical, it's like, it's still an EVA. Um, so like when we're like, if we're talking to zoom X, like that's like a full Piba, you know, plastic base, like super foam. This is not a super foam, you know, I mean, this is, I would compare this closer to like, you know, the EVA that you get in like a speed goat or even, yep. um, even ultras, like their ego, ego max, their non super one, the one that's in their Mont Blanc series. Yeah. I, I felt like this foam was very similar to that. Um, but I think when you combine that softer foam with this outsole that does have some exposed EVA, you're, you're just going to feel a little bit more of the ground, which for me coming into this shoe with the expectations that it would be something that I would race mountains in the, the, the feel of being able to feel the ground was not something that I loved from a racing standpoint. Um, from a training standpoint though, I, this ended up being a really nice training tool because it's a wider forefoot. It's lower to the ground. You know, it's that low stack. It did encourage me to run with like slightly more efficient biomechanics. So from a training standpoint, it was nice, but from a racing standpoint, I don't want my foot to be doing extra work during a race. Like, yeah, I want my foot to do like the, you know, bare minimum um you know like the like the lowest amount of effort possible because it, for me it's always been my feet that crap out first so like i need something that's really gonna like help my feet um and this yep. this wasn't the shoe for that so you know i guess like would i race in it i don't i don't think i would race in it you know um it's very comfortable and i could i found myself like really enjoying going on long runs in this shoe but uh I want, I just want a little bit more, especially if we're looking like long race, like long mountain race. I, I want more shoe short mountain race. I want a, a snugger fit and a little bit better rock protection. What about you? Agree with everything you said. Um, I think general, like generally everything about this shoe for me is just, and I'm going to be honest, cause that's the theme of this show. It's just an average shoe to me. Like mm -hmm. I, I am not like, you know, dreaming about it at night or excited, necessarily excited to put it on for a run on any given day. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's just a, a mess shoe. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm just kind of there. <laughs> no, I mean, that's fair. I mean, and like, and there's nothing wrong with like, and that. I agree with everything you said and I agree with everything you said, yeah. uh, especially about the long, it is, I, I, I will concede like four long runs. It is, it does provide a good experience on the longer runs. Yeah. And like, there's only so much space for shoes like this in, in, in like the shoe closet. You know, if I have my, like my average, like baseline shoe, um, kind of like, like we were talking about the, the Cascadia, um, where it's like this, it's the shoe that makes all your other <laughs> shoes feel great. I think this shoe is more comfortable and more fun to run in than the Cascadia, but, yes. um, but they, they, they overlap quite a bit in terms of like my use case for it. So I guess moving into like some of the competitor shoes, cause I did write down like Topo makes a handful of shoes that are very similar to the shoe as well. So we have, we were talking about the pursuit, which we've, we've reviewed the pursuit. I'll link that to that, uh, that episode in the show notes. The pursuit is the same stack in the forefoot. Um, it's just a zero drop shoe. So it doesn't have that five millimeter drop. So it's got a little bit less foam in the heel, same outsole. Um, very similar upper, similar fit. It's just a zero drop sibling. So there's that. The Ultra Venture 3 is a few more millimeters of stack in the forefoot and the heel. The Ultra Venture 3 is a 30 35, and it's yep. meant for more mellower, like door to trail type shoes. So if, yeah. if you want a little bit more cushion, um, it's got a more mild outsole as well. You know, that's going to be the shoe. Um, yep. So then this Mountain Racer kind of slots in the middle, but, you know, there, you probably don't ever need more than one of those between those three shoes you know in your yeah. in your uh, shoe closet looking outside of topo i think this does uh line up from a stats standpoint like with like the ultra temp or the mont blanc series in terms of kind of cushion but uh you know just not that zero drop so if you want that wider shoe like that medium cushion but need a five millimeter drop instead of zero, like this is definitely one to look for. Similar price to the Temp, much cheaper than the Mont Blanc series. And then when we remove the wider toe box, a couple that I wrote down were like Brooks Catamount 3. 
um, which we're just starting yeah. to run in review probably towards the end of the month or maybe into February. We'll see what that looks like. But Catamount three medium stack shoe, you know, six millimeter drop. This one's five. Um, it's kind of medium cush difference is the Catamount has like a propulsive plate and um, a super critical foam. So a little bit more, we'll need to do a little bit more running in that shoe to see like how that actually stacks up. But on paper, it actually c- competes with this mountain racer three, like very closely. And then on paper, probably actually some of the most similar stats that I found was the Hoka Torrent (laughs) three. It's, uh, yeah, I think it's like a four or five millimeter drop shoe, almost identical stack, as well as a simple upper and a one piece midsole that does have, or one piece outsole that does have exposed midsole and no plate. So the torrent is actually going to be very similar feel and ride to the shoe, which I've I've run quite a few miles in the torrent, and I actually agree, I I, I agree with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I agree. There's I agree one more shoe I would add. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, I mean, okay, it, it's like it's like off in all categories, just a little bit. Like this shoe is a little bit more cushioned, uh, a little bit narrower. Uh, a little bit more drop, but the Solomon Ultra Glide too. I think you could compare it with as well. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with that. Um, and like the biggest difference factor for that Ultra Glide versus Topo Mountain Racer is the Ultra Glide has like very thin, flexible rock plate. Yes, just to help plate, yeah. with those biggest rock hits. But um, yeah, those are definitely all similar shoes. Uh, okay, last last category, maybe two categories. Uh, how do you feel about the durability of this shoe? This is one of the positives for me. Like, it, I think it's a very durable shoe. I think you could probably put well over 400 miles in this shoe. I'm I'm seeing no wear in. I mean, you said you had a couple punctures. The outsole for me is intact. The upper is intact. For me, it's been an incredibly durable shoe, and I'm I'm more of like a, a stocky runner as far as runners go. I think the the durability is great. Um, I would also add two more positives, and I I, I wanted to make sure I covered this, and it's how amazing this outsole is. Uh, it's versatile in terrains, great traction. I was in Ireland on my last run in this shoe in the Wicklow Mountains, and there was this section where I had to descend to this 400-foot series of bog bridge steps uh, with no traction attached to the bogs, to the bridges. And this thing, these shoes handled them like a champ. And this, I, I really think this is one of the best outsoles out there so you pair the durability with one of the best outsoles in the game and the fact that the shoe is kind of a swiss army knife shoe in, in topo's um quiver it's great so th- those are the, i just wanted to add those i know i kind of ripped the shoe earlier i wanted to add in those two notes of appreciation yeah no i agree this is per one of this is I would probably put this in the top three, at least, of most versatile yes. outsoles in the industry. Like, yes. you can run on the roads in this. And I thought that this shoe, like, handled mud great. You know, it's deep lugs. They're pretty far apart. But for some reason, like, they don't get in the way on the roads. So, yeah, kudos to Topo for just not, like, messing with it. Like, they figured out this outsole design so long ago, and they just haven't changed it because they don't need to. Um, yep. There's not that many companies that do that. Um, Unless they want to shed weight. If they want to shed weight on a, on a future shoe, maybe you do it on the outsole. But like you said, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that I ha- I'm most nervous about for this shoe regarding durability is the midsole foam. You know, just the way that it started out. Like it's been a very much like linear kind of graph where like it started out firm at the beginning. And then it's just gotten softer and more flexible over the course of the 115 miles. And you know, it definitely doesn't feel like close to packed out or anything, but like, it's just pretty soft in the forefoot, like squeezing it. So I worry that like by mile 300, you know, with how I run, you know, in the types of, you know, terrain that I run, you know, 300 miles for me is going to log quite a bit of vert and time on feet as well. I worry that this midsole foam is going to be like by far the thing that wears out first. Like I don't, there's no wear on this upper hardly anywhere on the outsole after 115 miles you know this outsole probably has 800 to a thousand miles worth of oh yeah rubber on it and you know this upper seems very durable very robust but like there's just no way this midsole is making it as far as the other one so um that's my only big like durability concern is just uh the midsole foam but you know move it on to value 150 dollars what do you think yeah uh, well i think it's a great value shoe but not for the way it's advertised so this is called the mountain racer 
shoe. And I don't believe this is a shoe that you race in the mountains with. I think like you kind of talked about earlier in the episode, it's, it's a great like everyday trainer. Uh, in some uh, scenarios, it's a great long run shoe, but I, I don't think it's a racing shoe. So if you, if you take it, if you, if you avoid the name and you really evaluate the shoe and you look at what it can do based on the materials and the structure, uh, it's an amazing value for a Swiss army knife option in your quiver. Yep. Yep. I totally agree with that. You know, and for 150 bucks to get a, a nice quality upper as well as just such a beefy outsole and then just a shoe that you can reliably do most things in. And, you know, kind of as we've alluded to, not even alluded, like as we've concluded, we're done with alluded. We're up to concluded now. As we've concluded <laughs> with previous shoe reviews, oftentimes that Swiss army knife shoe is a bit boring. Yeah, but like, that's true. you know, and, but that's okay. Like if every shoe is super exciting, then, well, then that's also boring, but you know, uh, you need, you need that shoe to stay grounded. This Topo mountain racer three is definitely one of those for 150 bucks. You're going to get a lot of great running. And, you know, if you do decide you want to try out the shoe because you need just like some stability in your life, uh, and your local run specialty shop does not have them, feel free to use the link below to purchase the Topo Mountain Racer 3 from our friends at Running Warehouse. You know, your purchase is not only going to help you because you're going to get a nice Topo Mountain Racer 3 on your feet, it's also going to help allow us to do, you know, more reviews like this. I just want to add one thing, and you can clip this if you want, but I feel like I go through phases on this show where in certain episodes, I feel like I want to be for the people. And in other instances, I feel super elitist and want to be wowed with every single shoe that comes our way. And I'm, I, I think I'm just, Topo caught me at the wrong time and I'm feeling super elitist today. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> well, I'm curious to see how that changes over the course of, uh, course of the next, next few uh, shoe reviews. We've got some fun shoes coming up. So, uh, you know, stay tuned while Finn and I go and try and run some miles through the winter. Um, yeah, we've got some, we've got some fun stuff coming up. So, uh, thank you to everyone for watching. We'll see you in the next shoe review episode.